Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White and today's lesson is on acids and bases. We're going to talk about three definitions of acids and bases and we'll talk about the equilibrium constants that exist for ionization of weak acids, Ka for acids and Kb for bases. We'll talk a little bit about the self-ionization reaction of water that makes both hydronium ions and hydroxide ions, and then we'll talk about how to calculate the pH of solutions of weak acids or weak bases. And finally, we'll end up talking about the conjugate acid-base pairs. So these are the three definitions of acids and bases. The simplest one is from Savante Arrhenius, where an acid is just a substance that increases the concentration of hyd hydrogen ions, uh, which we usually write as H3O+, uh, and a base increases the concentration of hydroxide. The Bronsted-Lowry definition is the most practical definition and the most common definition where an acid is a proton donor and a base is, an ex is a proton acceptor. But there are exceptions to that. And there's a third definition uh, based on Lewis acids and bases where acids are electron acceptors and bases are electron donors. So in dilute aqueous solution, an acid can react with water to donate its proton to the water molecule making hydronium ions, H3O+, and uh, A-, minus, which would be the conjugate base of the acid HA. There's an equilibrium for this reversible reaction, and the equilibrium constant is given uh, a symbol Ka, and that would be equal to the hydronium ion concentration times the uh, A minus or the base uh, concentration divided by the concentration of HA, which is the undissociated but still dissolved acid. And so the equilibrium constant Ka is a measure of how effectively a proton is transferred from the acid to the water. And here, because water is accepting the proton, it plays the role of a base. The usual thermodynamic considerations apply and we can calculate Ka from thermodynamic data from enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy changes for the balanced reaction above. For bases, it's exactly the same, except we write the base equation up at the top as a base reacting with water to now take a a proton away from the water molecule to form the conjugate acid, BH+, plus, um, and that leaves a hydroxide anion uh, left over. We have a Kb expression, which is the equilibrium expression just as before, and that can be calculated um, from uh, thermodynamic considerations. Um, now Kb is a measure of how effectively a proton is transferred from the water to the base, and here water plays a role of the acid instead of uh, the base as we saw on the previous slide. So since water can act as both an acid and a base, you can imagine a, re a reaction with itself, and in fact this does happen. And so uh, water will react with another water molecule to produce hydronium ion and hydroxide. Now the equilibrium uh, for this reaction lies way, way over to the left-hand side. Kw, of course, would be the product of hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations. Here, the water molecules on the left-hand side don't appear explicitly in the expression for Kw because the thermodi thermodynamic activity of any pure liquid, like the, the water in this case, is um, defined to be unity. So it didn't appear in either the Ka or Kb expression, and it doesn't appear in the K W expression either. The numerical value for Kw is 1.004 times 10 to the minus 14. And so this reaction, this self-ionization of water, occurs only to a very, very small extent at room temperature. Uh, Kw is a measure of uh, how effectively protons are transferred from one water molecule to another. And you can see it doesn't happen very much at all. Uh, and water here plays the dual role of the very weak acid and a very weak base. Now the pH scale arises from this happy accident that Kw at room temperature is almost exactly 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And so for convenience we define the pH of a solution to be the minus base 10 logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration. So if pH is equal to 7 then hydronium is 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter and so OH minus concentration must also be 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter. So we say the pOH is also 7, and the solution has neutral acidity. 
If the pH is 5.2, then the pOH will be 14 minus 5.2 or 8.8, .8, and that solution is mildly acidic. On the other hand, if the pH is 11.5, for example, uh, anything, any value greater than 7, then the pOH is 2.5 and we have a basic solution. Now how do we calculate the pH of a weak acid solution? Uh, for example, what's the pH of a quarter molar uh, solution of benzoic acid? We can look up in tables that the Ka value for benzoic acid is 6.46 times 10 to the minus 5. And the very first thing we do in a problem like this is write down the balanced equation for ionization of the acid. We assume that the pH is going to be great, le uh, less than 7 because we have an acid. And so we write an acid type equation where we have hydronium ion on the right hand side and the undissociated acid on the left hand side it reacts with water and it produces the conjugate base of benzoic acid which is the benzoate anion on the right hand side then below that, um, for each species, we write an, an algebraic expression for uh, the concentration of that species at equilibrium. So if a portion of the benzoic acid uh, ionizes to produce an unknown amount X concentration of hydronium ion, then because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between hydronium and benzoate in the balanced equation, we'll also get X moles per liter of benzoate. And of course, in order to do that, we have to reduce the concentration of benzoic acid by the same amount X. So now we can plug these uh, algebraic expressions for the concentrations into the Ka expression, which would be the hydronium times, times the benzoate divided by the benzoic acid concentration. And so that's X squared divided by uh, 0.25 minus X, and that must be equal to 6.46 times 10 to the minus 5. And so so we have a quadratic equation to solve. We get two roots, and only one of those roots can be the real root. In this case, it's the positive root because we have positive concentrations of hydronium and uh, benzoate anion. And so that gives us directly the hydronium ion concentration, and we can take the negative base 10 logarithm of that number to get the pH, which in this case is 2.40. Same thing works for uh, the pH of base solution. In this case, we'll calculate the uh, pH of a 0.17 molar solution of ammonia, where the Kb for ammonia is 1.79 times 10 to the minus 5. Again, we write a base equation for ammonia with the base on the left and the um, conjugate acid, ammonium ion, on the right, and then hydroxide also appears on the right in this style of base equation. The algebraic expressions for the concentrations uh, go directly below that, and um, I should note that I've written a 1 underneath the water just as a reminder that the thermodynamic activity of uh, water or any pure solvent uh, in this case is uh, simply unity. And so we set up the KB expression just as before. We got a quadratic equation which we solve. This time X is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. And so uh, by taking the minus base 10 logarithm of that number we get that the pOH is 2.756. To get the pH we have to subtract this from 14 to get 11.244. Now I've uh, made a table here on the right hand side of acids and bases with their Ka and Kb values and I've arranged these in uh, a form of conjugate acid base pairs. So up at the top up at the top we have very strong acids like nitric acid and hydrochloric acid and their conjugate bases are very weak bases like nitrate ion and chloride ion. Down at the bottom of the table uh, we have uh, on the right hand side quite strong bases like hydroxide and uh, sulfide uh, anion and their conjugate acids on the left hand side are very weak acids like water and HS minus. And so uh, the uh, Kb and Ka values uh, are uh, such that very strong acids um, have conjugate bases that are very weak and vice versa. And in fact the product of Ka and Kb for each conjugate acid base pair is 10 to the minus 14 at room temperature. So we can prove that uh, the product of Ka and P Kb is Kw just by looking at the expressions for Ka and Kb. And when we multiply these out, the uh, uh, acids and their uh, 
the acids cancel in numerator and denominator, and the conjugate bases cancel in the numerator and denominator. And we find that uh, Ka times Kb is just the hydronium ion times the hydroxide ion concentration. And we can use the shortcut notation that pKa plus pKb must be equal to 14. Next time, we'll consider buffer solutions and polyprotic acids.